Okay, so we learned distance and midpoint in two dimensions. So now we're doing it in three dimensions. Take a look at how these axes are oriented. Your X is like it's coming out of the paper. Your Y is horizontal, so where normally X was. And Z is vertical, where normally Y was. If I were standing like this, so facing from the left, looking down from the top of the Z, then I'd see my Y and X. Okay, my positive, so positive here, positive here. And so then the Z is coming out. So it's still the same orientation, but this is what's common for how it's shown for an X, Y, Z um, system, three-dimensional system. Sometimes I think about it in the corner of the room, right? So the vertical, that pillar there is the Z. The ledge of the windowsill, like the windowsill there, is the X. And the ledge of the chalkboard, or not chalkboard, in this case, whiteboard, is Y. Okay, and so here, that X, that point X, Y, Z is up here somewhere, okay? Um, all positive. So this is positive Y this way, positive, positive. This does go underneath and it goes to the left um, and it goes backwards. Those would be the negative coordinates, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, we call it an ordered triple. In two dimensions, we call it an ordered pair. Triple, three coordinates. Always in that order, X, Y, Z. Just think of alphabetical order, right? So that's just um, sort of how it's oriented. We take a look at the first example. This says a rock climber R is standing at a point with coordinates 60, 80, 0. So that's really on the X, Y plane. Any two axes together forms a plane because the, the Z value is zero. So it's not any higher up. Okay, so then um, start to climb a rock. Another rock climber is standing at a point with coordinates 0, 0, 400. So it's on the Z axis because it only has a Z coordinate. Um, they're all given in meters. Determine the distance between the two climbers. If it was in two dimensions, then you're finding, you're using your distance formula, right? Which comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, it's three dimensions. So uh, think about what you would do. If we look at this diagonal here, what right triangle is it the diagonal, or uh, I should say, hypotenuse of? Well, that is the hypotenuse of this side here, okay? And this here, okay? And so this really is 90 degrees, okay? It's kind of slicing, looks kind of like halfway, right? Um, we know this, this is 400. Do we know this? No, but we can get that because take a look at that. This is a 90 degree triangle here, I'll do it in green. This one and this one, that actually forms, even though on paper it's not 90 degrees if you got a protractor out, this is a three dimensional shape drawn on two dimensions. So that's why it has to be diagonal like that. So there, when you're looking down on it, that's a uh, right angled triangle there. And so we can calculate this hypotenuse. Okay. Taking a look at this on the x-axis, that's 60 units. This value is the same as this one here. So that's 80, so this would be 80. Okay. So if I call this, I'm not going to call it x, y, z, I'll call it p for the hypotenuse. Or I could call it h, actually. Yeah, let me call it h for Oh, sorry. Oh dear, let's go here. So I'm going to call that H for the hypotenuse of the inner triangle. So H squared equals 60 squared plus 80 squared. Okay. Figure out what that is. Good 
with your calculator, not your cell phone. 10,000. Okay, so the hypotenuse is 100. That's actually a Pythagorean triple, right? Three, we talked about that the other day. Three, four, and five, or any multiple of that. So, or six, eight, and 10, multiplied by 10 is 60, 80, and 100, okay? So, we know what that is. Now to get, uh, I'm just gonna call that SR, because that's that whole uh, distance. So, I'm not using the, the distance formula because really uh, the coordinates are zero. So if you use the distance formula, it'd be 60 minus zero, 80 minus zero. But why why do that, right? It's, the distance formula comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm not going to show the, the zeros there. Here, again, oops, I'm going to show it squared. So here, that's going to be 400 squared plus my h, which was 100 squared. Has it? Yeah. So that's 16. Okay. Take the root. And so that's going to be. 100 root 17. If you simplify that. Now what I want you to take a look at is really to calculate this, which was what we were looking for, the length between S and R in a three-dimensional plane. We ended up uh, taking 400 and squaring it. So that was this component, the Z. And 100 squared, what did that, where did 100 come from? Well, if we look over here, actually, I'm going to keep the squared there. So 100 squared, where did that come from? That was this came from 60 squared plus 80 squared. Okay, so in order to get that distance, SR, we took the Z component squared plus the x component squared plus the y component squared. And that's because there were zeros for the other ones, but all we have to do then is, if, if it wasn't um, zeros for x, y, and z, then you would subtract them, just like you did for distance formula. Has it? Okay, so the other question, uh, would you be able to go straight to 400 squared plus 60 squared plus 80 squared? Yeah, would you expect exactly. Yeah, you, have to, you don't have to do this anymore, okay? So we did it this long way to see the relationship, but that's really what it is, okay? So, um, so let's look at that. If you look down your page, we'll come back to the midpoint. There it is. So there's your X's, your Y's, and your Z's. You do have to subtract them. It just turned out for that particular example, it was an x minus 0, a y minus 0, and a z minus 0, right? So it was really just the x, y, and z. So just use that. You do not have to do it in two parts. Often in, um, well, we will do, we'll be doing trig later, and we will have some diagrams like that in three dimensions. You may have to do some calculations if you're not given the coordinates, right, you're just given other distances, so you might have to do those in two parts. But if you're given the coordinates, um, that's the fastest way, okay? And then midpoint, take a look. So this, the only difference from two dimensions is this extra Z part. For midpoint, only difference is this extra Z part. If we look at our diagram for midpoint, uh, I'm going to just erase all of this just to make it clean here. Okay, so there's our midpoint. If we look um, halfway between 0 and 80 is 40. Okay, halfway between 0 and 60 is 30. 
If we extend those out, okay, they kind of meet about there. Then halfway here is about there. And then you're going to, if you, well, sorry, just a sec, a little bit more. Um, this is not going to be parallel, it's going to be um, diagonal like this. Oh, my alignment's a bit off. But this goes up to here, right? So you find half of your X, half of your Y, and half of your Z to get that midpoint. Okay. So that actually would be this if I drew it better. I'm just going to fix that actually. If I have, remember how I drew this diagonal here? So this would be the same, would be parallel, that and that, okay? So that's where, um, so now to get the midpoint between those climbers, we would look at our, so midpoint of this is SR. It's going to be the average of the X values. So that's going to be 30. We already decided that. Average of the Y, that's going to be 40. And Z, that's going to be 200. Okay. If there's non-zero coordinates, then substitute them in. But this was all, uh, this was uh, 60 plus 0. This was 80 plus 0. This is 0 plus 400. So really, you can calculate that. Okay. And then last one, find the distance and the midpoint. Again, you don't have a diagram, and now they're non-zero. So use those formulas there to find the distance and midpoint. Um, reduce it if you can for the radical. If not, then it also says to show as a decimal. And for distance, you can just call it line segment AB, the length of it. X1, Y1, Z1. X2, Y2, Z2. Yeah, I do. It's it's still plugged in here. Yeah, it's um, yeah, there it is. It's not the one that I came with the computer. It's one that Steve bought extra, so it's a little bit looser, but it still works. Okay, I'll see you after school. Yeah. Okay, so negative eight. Um, sorry, we have to. Uh, what am I doing here? I want to do x2 minus x1, so that's going to be 5 minus negative 8 squared plus 4 minus negative 10 all squared uh, plus 14 minus 8 all squared. I don't have a calculator on here, so. For a one, um, it's not an even number. Three doesn't go into it. Don't think you can simplify that. Okay, so you can leave that decimal form of 
The value rounded to the nearest tenth is 20.0. And then midpoint of AB, find the average of the x's, average of the y's, average of the z's. Simplify, just leave in fractions back. 